Sorry, I thought you were doing a film. Go on, David, you can do it. It's not letting me speak. No, you're Hello, not. Welcome to there we go. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. Just stuck on the mute. It's just stuck on the mute button. I'm clicking it going, <laughs> why is this not working? Now, don't adjust your sets. Don't look at the calendar. This is not Sunday. This is Thursday. We might have the same usual Sunday issues and technical problems, but it's Thursday. In fact, Phil, this always mm. seems to happen on a Thursday with me. So... <laughs> It does, yeah. The Sunday Blair and Gremlins follow you to a Thursday. They do. Oh, no way. That was, if you were watching that, that must have been horrendous. The longest three seconds of my life there. But it's fine. We're here. Guys, it's the TNF. This is, if you've been watching the bus since the start, you all know this is actually, this is my show, right? This is my show. Forget about Mark. Forget about the judge. Forget about Steve-O. Yeah, this is the Davy. This is the Davy Log show, right? The real TNF, and I'm back. Mm -hmm. I am back for one night only. All right, okay. So, <laughs> guys, look who we've got with us. Like I said, it's not the Sunday Blether, but I've got the dignified Sunday Blether crew. I have got Mark the Judge Gurney with us as usual on a Thursday. How you doing, mate? You doing all right? I was doing very well to that shoddy start to the show, and then you proceeded to insult me, insult Regan and Phil. Anyway, that part of the day, it'll be your last TNF. We'll probably go doing as your last show. Uh, well, look at Mike Steve was in the chat. Back too. In again, you know what I mean, mm. but I voted for you to get back, back on the show, mate. So, uh, man, that's your last chance, son. It's your last chance. All right, all right, judge. All right, okay. <laughs> Well, I've been told already, and it's we're three minutes and twenty-two seconds into the show, and I've been I've had a black eye already. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a show without Mark throwing one jab and Regan hit me with an uppercut. Regan, how are you getting on, my man? David, I'm doing well. It's my se it's my second time on the TNF. I think Phil gave me my, my debut on the TNF a few months ago, so it's good to be, to be back on the first day. I've got a bit of deja vu from Sunday morning there, but no, it's good to be on. It's good to be honest. Thanks. I'm glad to have you on as always. And Phil, can I get rid of you, mate? I think you've just been sitting in the studio since you came off last night. Is that right? Pretty much, aye. And I'll be on again tomorrow night at this time. So I am just doing three <laughs> days straight here, you know. So why not, eh? Why not? So I'll come on night. Sunday McKinley. Blairer on a Thursday night. Why not? <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. That. And that's, that's what it's all about. Talking about Celtic doesn't matter what night of the week it is. We'll, there's always plenty to talk about, and I'm sure the passengers have plenty for us to talk about. So get your points in now while we're doing all this good stuff, and we'll start starring them, and we'll get discussing because there's plenty to talk about. We've had a new signing in, potential more signings coming in. I'm sure we've got some ticket allocations to discuss. Judge, we can get on to that. But before we do, quickly, if you like what we do. Just give us a like, give us a share, slag our hair. Become a Boise Bus member for only a small cost of one ninety nine a month. All our content is free. 
There's no added to content, no extra content. And it just helps you support the bus and keep the wheels on the road. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and forcing you to do it. Nobody's taking any money out your pockets. And of course, piesports.com. Make sure you throw plenty of cash their way and get lots of pies for the weekend. But remember, you will get 12.5% off with the bus code BUS1888. Right, let's get talking, Judge. Where do we start? Now, you have become an expert at pronouncing this man's name. You told us off last time I tried to say it. You even told Phil off in the behind the scenes there when he <laughs> tried to say it. Do you want to let it just roll off the tongue like you're from Sweden yourself? It's quite What's easy, mate. It's Lagna like, like Bielka. I mean, it's probably like what, Bielka. It's, it's happened He's probably the, the nation's favourite thing straight away there. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a good signing. Well, mate. let's discuss him. Actually... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, discuss him if you want me. Let's right? discuss him. Let's just discuss him, yeah. <laughs> well, when you I, got, I thought... What you got to I, didn't, I, was, I wasn't sure where you were going with I, I thought he just wanted a wee, uh, you know, break down his set. No, I, was no, I, I read about his... Really I read his, um, his kind of scouting report on Twitter, you know what I mean? That's probably all we can go on, is these people that spend a lot of time looking at various kind of metrics and Tells what kind of player he is, and it looks to me like somebody, and it stood out to me straight away. Anybody that watched Celtic in pre season is they've introduced these long balls quite a lot, and I'm not against them. I don't want it to be the first option, but I'm not against it being an option. And his passing accuracy is very good. I mean, it's probably his, his biggest attribute is his passing accuracy. He's a good tackler as well, he's, he's decent in the air, but. A lot of his pointers tell me that he's he's brought in, I think, just to... Because I've seen Kyogo making runs constantly. We're all seeing it. More so when when it's not a game on TV and I'm, and I'm at the game. It's so frustrating to watch Kyogo making these wee darting moves and runs and nobody picks him up with these. And it's been frustrating since day one with Kyogo. He, it's quite encouraging that Kyogo doesn't get dispirited by it. He just goes up and tries it again and again and again. This guy might just be the one that unlocks it. Um, Maeda too, I think if he can get Maeda, it's made his first touch and he's he's crossing, you get that to the next level. What a player we've got to store there. And this guy just may, might just eliminate the midfield a lot of times. And, and um, in Europe, you might find that he's probably somebody that could be key, key for Celtic, especially if they're sticking with Kyogo in Europe or Maeda um, for obvious reasons. Anybody that watched Maeda in the World Cup can tell he's the kind of player that suited to playing for teams that are more counter-attackive and more conservative rather than just being the gung-ho Celtic that we see. I don't think that actually suits Maida's game, so it's quite impressive the guy's still starting every week and he's not playing his, his preferred uh, system, so good on Maida for that. But like Abielka, I've definitely seen a, a, enough of him on the clips and on the scouting reports to understand why Rogers signed him. Uh, it definitely looks to me like he's not the type of player that I think you sit on the bench and Carter Vickers hasn't gone anywhere. I think he's here for the season. I don't think there's any interest in Celtic selling him. You know what I mean? I don't think Niroki has been brought in to, uh, to be sitting on the bench. And same with this boy. Something tells me there's got to be a change to the system. See if we've got mm. fullbacks that can do a bit of both, you know what I mean? That can bomb forward like a Kieran Tierney and track back like a Kieran Tierney and bomb forward that Michael Lustig and track back that Michael Lustig. I know it sounds lazy, but are we are we looking at a, a back three that's a back five mm-hmm. and like we we wingers doing a lot of the, the hard graft. Oh sorry, fallbacks doing a lot of the hard graft. I see the reason why we can do it in Scotland because anybody that's watched Celtic in the last decades, you know what I mean, can see when Celtic play a defence, even when they're playing a four four two system. It's not for defenders as such because very rarely you see uh, our defenders uh, defend, you know what I mean? You're normally seeing guys like Scott Brown coming in and covering guys like Kieran Tierney. So we're always an attacking team no matter how the, how the system looks, how, the, how many defenders we've got in the park. So I don't see any reason why we can't do uh, three big defenders uh, with two attacking fullbacks. And this, this boy, I don't think looking at him and looking at his... He, his, his stats, etc. For his age, he's played like hundred games. I don't think he's been brought in to sit on the bench. And if he has been brought in to sit on the bench, then what a bench that is! Because if he's a backup for Carter Vickers or Nurovsky, 
And that as some backup, you know what I mean? But I just still don't think that you bring a guy that calibre in and that potential to sit on the bench. He just looks like he's oven ready to me. And I, and I think that's great. And good on the club because I've been wanting these types of players and the price tag isn't important to me as such. But if we pay £5 million for this player, I would still be saying the exact same thing. He looks on paper like something Celtic are missing. And uh, keep on bringing him in Celtic because this is what's getting the fans excited. And the boy through Wolves and all that, but another man it would get me off my chair, so keep it up, oh, yeah. silly. So, Regan Martin makes a great point there. He, you know, I think the price tag, Regan, was about three million. Am I right in saying uh, uh, for this point? That's not a price tag for a center half that you're you're you know you're paying to have sit on the bench. So, I think Mark might be on to something. As Alistair Jackson, three five two, got a uh, um. Hetty, he's uh, saying three four three formation. Oh, we could so look I at that. People... Give me David and say that Celtic have learned from the past, and and they're not willing to. And, and Brendan said with Celtic playing in Europe, they're playing six yard games, and they're saying, "Well, this guy's going to get a chance at some points. Mm. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe the nice. maybe the Polish guy in CCB will play Champions League, but this guy will be guaranteed that he's going to." play every SPL game after, after the Champions League, something like that, because, like, I know uh, CCV and the the new the new guy look really good players, but I don't think you can rely on them every single week, so I think that could be a situation as well. No, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. I think we don't want, like you say, we learn from mistakes. We're not needing another near beat on to fill in it in the Champions League. Mm. Um, we, you know, we don't want a massive drop-off if... You know, there's 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 rumours that Cameron Carter Vickers could be out for four or six weeks with a hamstring tear. That's not being confirmed, obviously. Uh, just rumours mm-hmm. flying around, and it, and if that is the case, you're not going into a Champions League game uh, or fixture worrying about a a massive drop off in quality. Obviously, we haven't seen the boy play yet. We don't know exactly what kind of if there will be any drop off. It could be even better. Who knows? But if you're paying three million from what he starts and what Mark's been saying, Regan, you know, that is good competition. And it keeps the likes of Cameron Carter Vickers on his toes. One massive thing that um criticism we could say about Joe Hart, for example, is he has nobody there yeah, to problem. take his to take his spot. He's not worried about it. So com- mm. uh, complacency can set in. And we yeah, don't yeah. want that happening with Cameron Carter Vickers. Um, no. So bringing in a player like him, as well as um, Rocky, really puts uh, the boys on their toes that there are competition there for for their spot. Yeah, that does, and it just shows you where David Tumble and Rio because everybody thought Rio was going to be a big player, but then Brendan came in and went, uh, "Well, I see something in David Tumble. He's he's um, ch- changed it around." So I think we need to be honest and say, "Well, if this guy goes in and impresses, but I don't think Brendan will be saying." Oh well, the the, the the Polish guy that was brought in, we bought, we bought him in. And he's played well. Brendan will look it on for a training basis, and he'll base it on who who he thinks is the best player. Because one thing I think that we've spoken about on the bus before, I think the problem we we were Ange points to call it Ange when you with Neil Lennon, they probably had the players that they were uh, favouring too much. And I think Brendan would do uh, Brendan would do it on a more basis where. Uh, see if he sees this new Swedish guy doing well, I think he would be he wouldn't be scared to, to throw him in. No, absolutely. Phil, I'm going to start going through some of these because we get a lot of comments tonight, so I want to make sure we get through plenty. So sure. Robert Baker, Phil, he comes in with is anyone hoping that the Podence, uh, Podence is next in the door? Now, I've said a lot about this on the in the group chat, Phil. Um, the rumours are certainly picking up. Now, I don't know if you remember this, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was early Brendan Rodgers. It might have been uh, just before that, but we were linked with him before. We he, were. Had one, he had one season at Wolves, and he wasn't really doing it, or he wasn't a starter. And there was talk about trying to get him on loan, and it never came yeah. to anything. Now, if I'm right, was that the Brendan? Was that early Brendan Rodgers? I think that's too late for Brendan Rodgers. It's been more recent than that. It may have been when was Lennon it? was in charge. Or maybe yeah, when Andrew was in charge. Was it when Lennon was in charge? Right. So the club have obviously. Got a, you know, so, so that's potentially looking at this is the club scouting, working again. We're still mm-hmm. kept around this boy. Now, I'm mm-hmm. t- if we get this boy, 
I will be delighted, Phil. I don't yeah. know about you. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a big fan of the Premier League. Um, mm-hmm. You've probably watched him countless times. He, for me, personally, he's he, he he's a very comfortable player yeah. in that league. He could go to any. He could go to another Premier League club. But I'd be quite surprised if another Premier club isn't interested in him. Yeah. Now he's. He, his stats maybe aren't stack up as good as some other wingers in the Premier League, but he certainly is a comfortable player in that league. So if we get him, we're not getting a guy that can't hack it at the Prem. Mm-hmm. We've just got a guy that's slowly falling out of favour, maybe lack of confidence, and yeah. is a one, one year left his deal that Wolves are maybe just not quite bothered about renewing. Mm-hmm. So I think we're in a really good position to go for a player. This isn't a this isn't a dud. Yeah. This isn't an Ayeti. A guy that signed to West Ham and was never deemed good enough, and we've taken him on at a high price tag. If we spend now, they're saying his valuations around about twelve million full, but one year left in his deal, people are saying maybe seven, maybe eight million. If we can get him for eight million, I'd be happy. What's your thoughts? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a strange one regarding him because every time I've seen him play for Wolves, whenever he's got a game, he usually doesn't do much wrong. He's not too bad a player, so the fact he's fallen out of favour there, and given that Wolves have had a Pretty rapid decline. Um, you know, a few years ago when they were, you know, finishing in European spots and so on, and they had obviously super agent George Mendes just basically giving them the whole Portugal national team minus Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, obviously Podence falls into that category being Portuguese as well. They were like a team that were really on the up, but they seem to have uh fallen down when we played them in that friendly there in the, the summer, they just didn't look up to much at all. So the very fact that he can't get a game in that team is uh quite surprising, but if he is available, so see every time I've seen him play, um, if he's got a game for Wolves, I've always felt he, he looked pretty good, doesn't do too much wrong, capable of scoring a decent goal. So I would be all in favour of it. Um, obviously, the rumours are going round, and you are right to say he has been linked to us before. Uh, so they probably have got the list out and been like, hmm, who can we who can we get? Say if it's true, if he's seven, eight million, then I'd be all over that if I was Celtic, and it is the type of player that is you know, an exciting one, even though he falls into that category, something I was talking about last night on Nostalgia, that Carter Vickers fell into a couple years ago, a guy who's a Premier League team, doesn't look like he's going to make their 25-man squad, and we're getting close to the end of the window, this is a time when these guys are going to become available, because their clubs are going to tell them, well, we can't register for a 25-man squad, so they're not going to be able to play any first-team football for those seasons, so they need to get loaned out, or they need to get sold, and this is where Celtic can come in and get them. And say Carter Vickers was a player that was in that category and look how good he turned out. So it's not something that fans should turn their nose up at, really. It's not Absolutely. a bad market shot then. So if Podence is available and that is the type of price we're talking, yeah, I'd, I'd be all over that if I was Celtic. I really do hope it is happening. Mark, he signed for Wolves in 2020 on a four-year deal at 16.9 million. Um, he's had one international cap, one full international cap for the Portuguese team. Which I okay, it's only one, but that's a very you know if you're a winger at Portugal, that's a very difficult squad to get into. You mentioned quickly there before we moved on to Regan that you you would be keen to see Podence coming in as well. Um, where do you see him featuring in the Celtic squad if we do manage to sign him? To see, see people have mentioned he could play in a ten. I've only really seen him play as a winger for Wolves, mind you, but um, I know he wears a number ten shirt. Uh, would you be Happy that it's a left on because I think he's more left sided. If I'm, I might be wrong there, but he walks straight into this team, eh? I well, he's a right footed left winger, and I really like that. There's something about the left footed right wingers, they and vice versa, they can just kind of caress the ball over the top rather than the, 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 the cross. We've not got the strikers with the height to, to go on the end of a cross ball as such. When you're running, it's running at pace, it's normally. Kyogo's goes good at and getting in behind, you know what I mean? And I think that we stroke of the ball over the top is most suited to somebody playing on their opposite, playing with their opposite foot, if you get me. I watched a bit of his stuff earlier on and I must admit, it was one of the ones I watched it and I went, he looks far too good to be on a Wolves team and no play football. And I was wondering if he had a, a, a checkered pass with injuries, but nothing popped up uh, concerned about him. So you probably find with the state they're in, there's maybe one that I get off a wage book and get some money and they sold a guy for five and a half million and all it's been I think they're trying to, and they, were, they had a deal in place for a guy for 16 million and it fell through because it turns out when they opened their pockets the, the bank cards or, or cash available to buy the player so I don't know how they put the bid in the first fucking place but, they, but so similarly they've been a bit of a state in there so maybe at eight, eight and a half million pound which was touted 
for me, that would be a marquee signing. That that would be one that you know I'm I'm going to be consistent here, and I'm not going to apologise for saying it. You know, I mean, this is the type of player I was expecting and hoping Celtic would do. And I, I felt like Celtic wouldn't do it. So if they do pull off these kind of signings, I'll be the first one to say great, but I'll not apologise for having the opinion that we should buy them in the first place. I'll stand by that. Um, so these type of players uh, could be the ones that were mentioned come later in the window. I've not seen any else think them. And normally when you see that a player like this, it'll be like Celtic, you go wanting for talking to the Tav Mahid, and you go Brentford and Celtic, you go, right, OK, Celtic are getting used as a make weight here. Uh, to push a deal forward for some other club or some agent. But it seemed to me like it's progressing quickly. And I did see a quote for Fabrizio Romano, a uh, weekend's pal, that, um, that, uh, that, uh, that, that Celtic are talking to him. So that confirms that it's not just a lot of shite, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'd be happy for um, uh, for that deal to go through. I'd be, I'd be, I, I would hope Celtic use that as a level of player, like as a benchmark to say, look, this window's not over yet. This is the type of player they might bring in. I think a defender looks to me like, as I say, the money doesn't matter if we pay £5 million for him. I still think he's the profile just fits what I think Celtic need. So money isn't the, the big concern. I mean, if you go that guy Podence on a free, it's, I would still take him and still be excited. Um, but, um, he's the type of player I think. I remember um, when we signed Scott Sinclair, and I, the first thing I did was YouTube him. And I'm not sure I compare the two of them because that's really lazy. But I YouTube him straight away and I went, Look at the pace of that guy running towards defenders. Scotland, Scotland defenders won't be able to put up with that. And they'll give European defenders a, a, a hard time, I know, at a certain level. And I got the exact same feeling about this point. As soon as I seen him, I went, it's sort of right having, a, having the pace like a badder. And then you realise that not only are, are his legs made of spaghetti, so is his fit, and he can't actually play, put the ball by somebody. This guy seems to have both. He can run run towards players and just skip, just skip by them like the one they're there. Celtic need that. I don't want to see Dyson Maeda flung in the, in the scrap peep, but that's Dyson Maeda's um, uh, worry. I think he becomes a third striker. I mean, I still, actually, on a side note, I, I've watched that uh, Shanklin tonight, and he's actually a player that I've, I've actually not got a problem with the guy at all. He's a Rangers fan, but see, watching that guy, if you've got to say somebody for Scotland, that guy just, He's all other place. Uh, he looks like a finisher that I think Rangers would, would, would do well to buy. He, he scores penalty taste. I don't, I'm surprised that no Scottish team has looked at him, Celtic or Rangers, because he'd be a squad filler for European games, but he'd also step in. Uh, uh, you, could, uh, you could definitely bring that guy on a cup match or even bring him on a big match in Scotland, and he would, he would do you 10 goals a season. I'm not going to doubt about that. He'd probably score you 20 goals a season at Rangers by the time you get penalties. Um, just because you mentioned a striker there. That guy Podens, 100%. Uh, David, I think that would be a marquee signing. It would be a signing of the level I think we were ex- expecting when we go. It's what we've been asking for. It's what we've been asking right. for, Mark. It's what de- no, sorry, did, Phil, uh, David. It's what we demand, mate. It's as simple as that. Yeah, exactly. No, you're spot on. No, because, Regan, what Mark said is absolutely right. He fits the profile of what we've been demanding as Celtic fans, that... Oh, I'm going to say it, oven ready. I'm looking at the teams that he's played for. He, he played for Sporting Lisbon and he played Champions League level with them. He's played Europe, He's played the Europa League um, 12 times for Wolves, scored three goals. Uh, he's, he's played Champions League qualifiers with them. Uh, with the FA Cups, he's... Like I said, he's, I'm looking at the... I'm looking at the 40 times he played for Sporting Lisbon. He's played 105 games for Wolves, 16 goals, 9 assists. This is the caliber player that that we're asking for. A player, Regan, that he's twenty seven years old. Now I'm seeing I'm seeing in the comments some people we're not going to pay twelve million pounds for a player. No, you're right. That's not what we will be paying. The Celtic aren't going to go in at twelve million. No, but I think we could definitely get this boy for eight million. I would mm. also seen that maybe eight million is too much for a player of his age. I don't know because for me personally, <clears throat> everyone's got their opinion, Regan, but. 27 year olds you're in your peak years and we're getting a, a boy a Portuguese mm. national I one cap but a, a proven Premier League player in his peak years to come to Celtic with Champions League experience mm-hmm. uh, Europa League experience are we going to make our money back on him probably not but that's not who we're wanting to make money back off of no, we want to make money off of the likes of a Hatati a Jota 25 million so that we can buy a more established better quality player 
Don't worry about making the money back on Podence. Let's make the money back on Owen. He's a superstar, Mark. You know, <laughs> so but you get my point. I'm being funny there, but my point is, we we buy the players like Odin, and hopefully we can sell him for 25 million to the Saudis in two years' time. So then we can go and buy another player that's maybe slightly older, a bit more established, with a bit more pedigree. Regan, is, would you not agree? I think Podence is a perfect training for Celtic. And if you offered me to pay twelve million for him right now, I would I would definitely do it because I'm telling you right now, Brendan has had a hand in this signing. I know you're talking about <clears throat> a long time, but but I'm sure Brendan has been has been impressed by him in the in the in the Premier League as well. And he probably looks at that Champions League experience as well and the fact that he wants to do well in Europe. Because I think Podence is just a perfect play for Celtic. He's twenty he's twenty he's twenty seven years old, like you said, David, he's still got plenty of years. And I want to make another point in terms of not every player that Celtic buy we should be looking to sell on. If, see if you want Celtic to improve as a club, we, we should get three or four players every single year where we go, these are the, these kind of players are the players that are going to take us to the next level. And I think that's what Brendan wants. That's why Brendan came back. Brendan didn't come back from Mullenbrew to sign again or, or somebody of that level. He came back because, because he's Celtic with some proper ambition, and I think Podent would de- we would definitely be that. I, I know had people say to me uh, uh, about a month and a half ago that Marco Tilio was uh, 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 what, what, uh, was the guy that was going to replace Jota, but I was still no t- uh, taken for that because I thought that Brendan would want to make a stamp on this team, and I think Podent is, is definitely that. Um, I think the one thing that we need to do. Um, is definitely make a marquee signing, and I think you would definitely fall into that category, um, David. No, no, you're absolutely right. What I would say is, I'm not going to get my hopes up just yet, though, because like I said uh, to you, Phil, was I'd be very surprised if another, even Luton Town. I know now. Don't get me wrong. We can compete with Luton Town, no. right? But it's no. that keeping them in the Premier League, just that little. That little bit of keeping somebody in the Premier League can sometimes just be enough. Yeah. So I'm, I, I, listen, we know what the modern day footballer is all about. It's not always about. It's not always winning. It's not always about winning trophies. It's not always mm-hmm. about even playing in the Champions League. It's just being in that Premier League and making that money. And I, listen, I use Luton Town as maybe a bit of a, a stretch, but even like a Bournemouth, I reckon yeah. would I would I wouldn't be surprised if they wouldn't be at least interested in speaking to him. And then you've got a player that has to make up his mind whether he wants to. Come and win silverware, play yeah. in Europe, or just stay in the Premier League because he likes being that Premier League player. Phil, is that is that fair to say that just because yeah. of the landscape that we work in, it doesn't take much for a Premier League player to just move to another Premier League team for almost just he enjoys being that Premier League player that can pay those wages. Yeah, sadly the the waters we swim in, you know, we're competing with these lower end Premier League teams. It's quite a sad indictment, really. We you know, I mentioned Luton Town there. Yeah, I know Russell always uses Bournemouth as a sort of a bogeyman example when he's ever he's sort of trashing the bottom end of the Premier League. But yeah, Luton Town are going to become that, I think, now with the size of their club. They've got a stadium that's even worse than Bournemouth's. Um, but if this boy, you're saying he's got one cap with Portugal, right? So he's that guy could be on the periphery. He, if he's going to get into a national team like the Portuguese one, which is one of the, the higher ranked ones, with a major tournament in a year's time, He's more likely to get in by playing at a higher standard, uh, which is a sad reality. Again, we play, you know, teams like St. Mirren and Motherwell and that every week. And if even if he was playing for a Bournemouth or a Luton or you know, whatever teams are down at the bottom end of the Premier League, Brentford and whatnot, he's more likely to get noticed and get capped for the Portuguese national team getting well, that I will say there, Phil, though. summer. What I will say though, just to cut in, sorry, is who's know. in charge of the Portuguese national side just now? Um, oh, it was uh, the former Belgian manager, uh, Roberto Martinez. Martinez, and he is by. one that isn't snobby about our oh, league. Yeah. You know, his wife being Scottish, he's, 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 he's signed Scottish players. Uh, yep, he's brought in Boyata off the, out of the cold as well. You know, he, so, so uh, even considered I bringing Jota, really? they not take Jota in for. Uh, he was in like. Was so, he the, the? Did he take over the manager after the the World Cup there? The, 
Because yeah, Jota was right. in the provisional Portugal squad before the so World Cup. So it would have Cup. been before, he, before he got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I mean, I, perhaps no, right, Roberto though. Martinez might say to him, look, you wouldn't. I'm just if you go to Celtic, that doesn't mean I'm not be keeping an eye on you. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's. So, but yeah, like what we're saying is, it's it's going to be a bit of a balance in that to figure out whether mm-hmm. what 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 does he want out of the the remaining years. You're in your peak years. Yeah. Uh, in your career, you, need, you want you trophies. I think you need Sorry. to remember, David, that um, Roberto, Roberto, I think Roberto Martinez was pictured at Celtic Park when uh, Bayata was playing. So. Uh, when he was the Belgian manager, so I don't know that put him off. I think yeah. he's mostly that he's like like Mark says, his wife's Scottish, he's um I don't know what Sean Mullins up to, but is he is he you know one of the coaches? He's a bigger manager, I think. I think he's a bigger oh, manager. Big because I, I remember Sean Maloney used to be his right hand man. Um, but yeah. I don't think I don't think Roberto Martinez would be a snob to Scottish football because he played in it, he seen Bayata in it. He's seen Jason uh, the Dyer in it. Mm. I don't think he, he he would be the the the, the guy to say to Paul Dance, look, if you go there, you're definitely not playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Especially sure in Europe. Obviously, you know, we've got that Champions League football. And I if we can know. keep in Europe after Christmas, maybe drop into the Europa League. If he puts his performances there, then that's that's all good. But yeah, it's uh, we're a national team though, like Portugal. You know, you would think they'll probably look at a higher league first. But no, hopefully, regardless, if he has got the choice of us and a lower end Premier League team, he uh, he chooses us. Because yeah, I'd like to see him join us if that's the case. If it's definitely a, a, a real realistic rumor, uh, if it's uh, out there, so hopefully, hopefully we see it happen. Mark, before there's, we've got plenty of other questions that I'm going to bring up soon, but just quickly because I don't think we've managed to discuss it, and I'd really like to get your thoughts on this one. Uh, now, and I can't wait to get Regan's. Uh, Eric Dyer has been mentioned. Now, does he fall into that same category that we were just describing? about Pudence that was getting us excited about Pudence because there's been a proper mixed, I mean, no, I would say mixed, I think, madly negative view on even the, the thought of Eric Dyer being coming in. Now, I think you also said that he's in talks with Saudi club, so this could be a pretty quick quick one from you, but let's say there is a little bit of meat on those bones there about Eric Dyer coming to Celtic. Would that upset you? Would that bother you? Would you be excited about a player of of his quality coming in? Well, make, make, make no mistake about it. Somebody who's no performing at an elite level for a team like Spurs is more than capable of coming up to Scotland and doing a brilliant job. This is a guy who's been capped for England dozens of times, you know what I mean? And I don't think um, <laughs> we can get a big say to him. just scored. That's oh, I just scored. Oh, that was, I thought he was applauding my point. Um, <laughs> he was, he's doing both. Was he? <laughs> he was in the Macarena for a minute here. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, why not, David? Because I don't think so. I think so yeah. Can't do yeah. things for England. It, it doesn't make you a dud because you you fell out of favour. Uh, we've had players that have fell out of favour with our new squad that we day jobs for teams competing at a different level for Celtic, and it's Spurs on a different planet for Celtic in terms of their first eleven or first eighteen or whatever. And some it's something in most cases. Don't get me wrong. I think it's players that could play for them, but. Um, so absolutely not. I'd be buzzing if he brought him in. I'd put it this way: I wouldn't be sitting there uh, flinging my phone inside the fish tank or anything like that if he if he signed for Celtic. You know what I mean? I'd be, I'd be very happy to see him come in. But I did see that he was the Saudi teams are going to offer him like four hundred and twenty-five billion trillion pounds. So uh, he's going to go there and probably if he gets the offer. I seen Manu Mardia as he was leaving the stadium. Somebody gave him a Rolex. One of the fans said, "There's a Rolex for playing well today," and he dropped it. I mean, it just shows you, even if <laughs> he's, there, so not, he's not a basketball player, <laughs> he's in a, in, a, in a Rolex for playing well today, and the guy's like, oh, all right. He's like, Kusty, I hear you get people asking to sign your, t- sign, sign your shirts so they can sell them. Yeah, they're like your Rolexes. Different planet, mate. <laughs> uh, it's, their, it's their culture. I'm sure my dad will probably tell you uh, at some point, but when he was... Obviously, he's no he's no longer a bus driver, but he was a he was a bus driver, and he was training a lot of the bus drivers down in London. And there was one guy, I can't remember where he said he was from, but he was uh, uh, Asian. And once he qualified, once he'd passed the test, my dad qual- passed him and everything. 
he came back into work and it's part of their culture to gift. If you've taught somebody like that a skill uh, of gift, they, they, will, they, they want to gift you something. And this guy turned up with a Giorgio Armani watch for my dad as a gift for teaching him how to drive up. And my dad was just like, no, honestly, no, don't, I don't thank you, but I don't need it. But no, please take it. It's a, it's, it's, you know, it's part of their culture. So there's just a wee bit of culture. Yeah, it's right. But uh, madness, a Rolex watch for, you know, these guys can afford their own Rolex watches. Let's not get us wrong here. But Regan, you're our chief Spurs scout. Eric Dyer? Yes or no? And listen, before you answer, he's no, I don't want you to, like, this is a different gravy here between playing, you know, with, with Spurs and I know you're going to have your Spurs glasses on here, but come on, he would do a job for um, Celtic, would you not? Would I you assume not? that he would do a job in Scotland, probably not in Europe, because he's he's not a very good centre back. I think what Brent, what uh, Brendan could do is play. Is he not a centre mid though? Is he not a centre mid though, Regan? Was he not just converted to centre back? He was so converted by. Uh, Jo- by Jose Mourinho. Yeah. So would you not be better? Like, so obviously we've signed another centre half. So I, if we were to sign him, Regan, I don't think he would be. I mean, he could be. He could be. He could be, he could be cover there. But yeah, I think he'd be a great cover because as much as Brendan was saying, Stephen Mills, uh, playing Stephen Mills for forty games, I don't think that would do, do me do my heart feel you any good. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of Eric Dyer, I mean. I think he would do well in Scotland, but in terms of Europe, I would say no. But I think for, for Celtic, I think that that would be a, that, that that I think it would be a very amb- a very ambitious move because although I'm saying that he's not having his best years, I mean this was Eric Dyer um, two years ago under Conte, who said he's one of the best centre backs in the Premier League. He was playing he was playing well f- for for uh, for the national team as well, so. I think he, I think he'd be a very good move, and I think that would uh, take Celtic to the next level, definitely in Scotland, but possibly in Europe. Um, yeah, I think it'd be. A, uh, are they talking much a fee, David? Are they, what are they saying for Eddie uh, Dyer? I, I, I don't know because I've I've not seen a fee thrown about. Have you, Phil? In terms of like, no. I think he would command big wages. I've seen, seen. I've seen. Sorry to interrupt you. I did see that Spurs when. We're happy to let him go for half a million to the, that Saudi team to get him. At I, I think we get him on loan. I think we off. I think we do the Cam and Carter Vickers card and play loan man option to buy. That would I be think mad. Last year, I maybe. think as this is last year. Well, I, mean, I might just made it up, mate. Uh, no, you might. But no, right. Event things. Is his last I mean, year? Would, again, eh? No, I think he's got one year left. Okay. I will. Unless they're oh, going to be a Carter Vickers and extend it so they can get a fee, I, I would. Sorry, I would take. Them. Sorry, Phil. Uh, Phil, yeah, I mean, I, I jokingly put that video in the in the group chat of him chasing after that fan after he said something about his, his sister or something. Now, could you, I, I, could you imagine him? <laughs> we don't want him playing in that in that derby. Then again, there'll be there'll be no fans for him to chase after anyway except maybe a, a couple of handful but uh, yeah what's your thoughts Phil I know you're quite a you'd be quite keen on it I know Regan's saying like in Europe he would maybe be out of a disaster but I mean this guy got to this you know get to the semi-finals and the finals with England in the, in the, as a team obviously but Aye. I mean you're not getting he's, there's, uh, there's plenty of players for Gareth mm. Southgate to pick and Eric Dyer seemed to be one of the first guys on the team sheet every and every game yeah. in those tournaments. So I mean, yeah. I would, I would, mm. I think he's, I think he's the whipping boy at Spurs. I think yeah. he's their, their uh, star felt. You know, <laughs> he could. He, I, I think that's maybe he's just kind of been tarred with that his shite brush. When really, I think he's just lacking confidence. He needs a, a team to, yeah. or a manager to put their arm around him. And I think, I think he would do more than okay. At Celtic, whether he was filling in at centre half if needed, but uh, you know more of that defensive midfield, you know, uh, yeah. uh, him alongside Carl McGregor, and oh, I think he would, I think he would do just fine, and he can speak Portuguese as well, so he could, uh, oh, he'd be he able to communicate. Oh, yeah, I uh, it's, it's, it's a weird one with uh, the stats from you. You're right there about his you know, England exploits because he played in the 2018 World Cup. England got to the third place playoff and lost to Belgium, but he played in six of the seven games that they played. 
I can remember because when I saw his name come up again, I was thinking he was he was definitely like getting games for England quite regularly. He scored the winning penalty shoot in the in the penalty shoot against Colombia when they beat him in the second round. He scored the winning penalty that day. So I was like, I'm sure he played a fair few games. But I looked up, he played in six of their seven matches that one. And as much as I don't really rate Gareth Southgate, he seems to do pretty well at tournaments, getting to a semi-final and a final, and he sticks mm. by guys like Eric Dyer and stuff like that in his team, so he must be doing something right. I do, you know, you're right about the... He does seem to get a lot of criticism, but what Mark said, I think is spot on. Again, if you're looking at purely from the standpoint of coming up here, you know, being a sort of like a, you know, out, out the reckoning at Spurs, to come up here and play against the teams that we play week in, week out, should be absolutely fine. I think he would be okay and fine. But maybe not a starter every week, but I think as a solid hand, because it's you know, apparently he can play three different positions: right back, defensive mid, centre back. So he's got a few. He's a bit of a utility man. Um, but yeah, very vegan's right on the point though about yeah, Europe he might not be a a starter. But again, there's no guarantees that he's coming here to start those type of games. Again, he could just be seen as a good solid hand to have in the squad because he covers a few positions. And most of all, he comes with such big game experience. So 250 plus games for Spurs in the top flight of England. He played in the 2019 Champions League final. I'd imagine he probably played his part along the way with Spurs getting to that final. And so he was in the, you know, in England's team that got to the 2018 World Cup third place playoff. So he's definitely got the big game experience ticked anyway. And again, just taking it from you know the standpoint of who'd be playing up against every week, I think he would do more than fine. And if it's true about 500,000, if that is the type of fee. Then again, go over it. But as you said as well, like in terms of links, I'm sure the only tweet I've seen or the tweet where it started from was this one that just said that he's got a host of clubs that are looking at him and it had things like Benfica, Celtic's name was thrown in there, there was offers from Saudi. So it does feel a bit like it's a loose link that's kind of a lot of fans Aye. have just picked up and be like, oh God, Aye. you know, oh, we we'll like to Eric Dyer. And it seems like our name was just thrown in there and a bit of a hodgepodge of uh, different names. Uh, but it again, season it's all you know. then you know, I'd be all over that because I say I think he ticks a lot of the boxes, experienced head without a shadow of doubt. Absolutely, I don't again. I, I keep seeing it, Frank. You're, I mean, you're totally, I get your point, mate, and you make a lot of sense and you entitled to it, but I just don't think we need to be focusing on too much of whether we can sell these boys on after. I think we'll recoup our money back in terms of making sure that we because look, we're gonna have to try and qualify for Champions League next year again, aren't we? You so, want to go with the club, David. So sometimes it's not all about uh, thinking about selling the players all the time because so, so sometimes like you can bring in players, you can bring in too many but you want to sell, but sometimes you just it's just about enjoying Celtic and no thinking about se- selling these players at the first opportunity you get because like I think a Podens, I think a Podens, Regan, if we sign him, short sales go through the roof for a guy like that. Podens oh, i seen a guy, I watched Clyde Wan earlier on, I don't watch that much, but I have been this, and there's a guy saying about Podens, he's not even signed yet, he said, I am Joe what we can, see. no, it was, sorry, it was L- Laga Belka, he went, oh, and do you know what, we'll make a fortune on this boy when we sell him, and they're like, you're not, he's not even played yet, and you're like, I said, what you want to do, just enjoy what he's doing, session in the morning. Some people are like because and, and you can't build a team with, with 11 players you want to sell straight away. You, no. you, there's got to be longevity and there's got to be players. See, so if I talk to you, if we get a player in who might just be the next level at 29, do you know buy him because you can't make money back? I could have given a flying well, fuck. Yeah. Any Celtic fan who's, who, who cares about Celtic making money on players, or, is, they're looking in the wrong direction. It's only part of the matters. I want to ask I think, you. I, I want to ask you. I don't know why as a fan base, like Celtic fans are so obsessed with selling the players. I mean, like, yeah. people, like even when Rio Hattati came in last year, people are, people are talking about, oh, we're, we're going to get a lot of money for Rio Hattati. Like, I think we should just enjoy the players. I don't, I don't know no. why that. Regan, let's put it in a, let's put it this way, right? In terms of maybe more of us can understand and relate to. You see a car in the garage, and I, oh, I really want that car. Oh, I love I love the wheels. I love the color. I love the size of the engine, the power, everything. Uh, but how much are you gonna? How much will you get for it when you sell it? I'm no giving yeah. a fuck. You do, you know before you've even left the garage, it the car's devalued significantly the minute you drive out of mm-hmm. garage. Nobody thinks about it that way. No, I'll listen. I'll cross that bridge when it comes to selling it. I'm not buying a car 
what when I'm wondering what I'll manage to make on it when it comes to selling it. I want to enjoy the car for what I bought it for. I want to enjoy the colour, the wheels, the power. And when it comes to selling it, I know fine well I'm not making my money back on it unless it's a collector's item. And it's less like there's not going to be that. So just I would just try and say, as fans, we don't need to worry about Celtics selling on players. The, the power, the the color. I was like John Collins had joined, uh, would you call that again, uh, Top Gear? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk about some players that are still that are here. Yeah. Because there is talk of and San Fan Celtic has said that he, I'll take Hatati and Abada sending new deals over to anyone who's who's been mentioned. Mm. Now Hatati I, I agree with that. Abada Abada I, listen, I, I like Abada, right? And his his goals speak for themselves, but like he wasn't good enough to get ahead of Jota. Just because Jot is away doesn't mean he automatically becomes, you know, he mm-hmm. should be the number one pick. We want to find somebody the equivalent or better than Jota. Therefore, that automatically means he will be ahead of Abada. Do I want Abada to still be here? Absolutely. But um, between the two, I'd be more happy that we kept Hatati. Um, anyway, bringing this up, I think that kind of puts to bed this whole narrative that oh, Hatati wants away. He's turned down a contract, yada, yada, yada. There was obviously never been a contract extension discussion made at that point. And I think maybe Brendan's laid down the law a wee bit. The whole, it was a fresh start for everybody. I went, you know, and obviously he had that blind pass and maybe he just got a little bit too big for his boots. And I think he's obviously wanting to see how Turnbull does. Now, I think obviously Brendan, Brendan's no daft. He wants to keep Hatati. And if it's a case of getting him in the in the boardroom and, 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 and having a chat with the manager or whatever, and getting him a sign new deal, I think that's I think that's paramount. I think we need to get that done, Mark. Are you happy with that? Uh, what am I missing? Cool. I'm not messing with Kevin there. Kevin knows how to get me yeah, Feel for that, Kevin. He's, uh, he's a man of some own soul. Clearly hasn't watched the Sunday blather because this is not dignified tonight. Oh. Mark. <laughs> um, but yes, Atati, would you, we need to get him tied to Mark, yes? Aye, 100%. If he wants to stay, tie him up and... I've not been impressed. I, I definitely think there's a bit of an attitude uh, problem with him. Him walking at the stadium and he's known fans. That, I don't care about that. It annoyed me because where he, where he did it last season, I'm not, where is his culture? I'm not, I'm not impressed with anybody that does that. These people pay your wages. They sit in the rain. You fucking stop and talk to them at the very least. And whatever. Anyway, or at least acknowledge I, them. Yeah, no, I'll get right that on the chest, right? Um, but... Um, uh, I would take him to sign a new contract. I think that was why they, you looked at the players where he wanted to stay. You, you were saying Kyogo, God, Carter Vickers, Hitati, that in that order, you know what I mean? And he was he's the top of the list there, you know what I mean? Top three anyway. So I'd keep him only if he's in the right headspace, mate, because he's, his performances have dropped. But it could be what Brendan Rodgers said. He has to learn how to be part of my team. And if you watched the 20 minute cameo against Aberdeen, he was dropping dead a lot deeper. He was. Do a lot more work, and I think the more conservative approach that we've seen so far under Celtic might not have been in Hatati's uh, normal game plan. It's all about getting the ball, turning around, sprinting forward, and maybe he's been he's been deviating for that process pre-season and the bounce games and training. And Rogers is, is name up by the way. There's no superstars that he, in that select team. That, I mean, uh, compared to the guys he's worked with before, you know, what I mean, let's be honest. So. Not be intimidated by somebody who's been player of the year last year or whatever. So it's laid down the law, and I'm all for that. I, I normally, when a player, a manager of this caliber comes in, there's normally a top casualty. Uh, there's always a casualty in these where somebody big has to kind of get uh, their face planted or get punted. Just to, I don't know. It just I think the big managers date me. It's like an authority thing. You see it already. Play somebody will come in and. Man, you if I talk to a player who you don't expect to go gets pushed aside or they end up getting sold. I think Hatati for I thought he's going to be under that category, but if he signs a new contract, I'll be fucking delighted, you know what I mean? But I tell you something, if Brendan was just say, he said the exact same thing to Lee Griffiths and the exact same thing to Hatati, you didn't score 40 goals for me, you know what I mean? You never did this for me. It's up to you to prove to me that you can do that. And we saw how ruthless he was. This is what I was talking about under Ange and what, how I was so excited about Brendan Rodgers coming in. This is a proper manager here. This isn't a guy that perfects one system. 
This is a guy at half time says, I told you, Turnbull, playing good is all right, but it's consistency. Half time, you're fucking dug me half at park. If he sees something wrong, he'll change it instantly. And Hatati found it out to, to his end downfall at the start of the season. Playing the first game of the season is a big deal for players. It's a big deal. This isn't it? Hamilton Aki's on a Wednesday night. That, that, Hatati wanted to play that game, I can assure you. He was dropped and he would have felt the disappointment for being dropped. And then he was dropped at a big game at Aberdeen. And he did get his time, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that I don't think it was as black and white as people may do. I definitely uh, believe that discussions have been made before the move because do I think the boards are incompetent? 110 percent. But I know that incompetent that they wouldn't have at least asked the guy the question. I, I definitely think they'd have had to sit down uh, during the summertime because I think, not- I think especially David that they've offered Kyogo a new contract. So you're telling me they've offered Kyogo a new contract with the nose pulled to Of course they have. I, I, I've definitely, I've, I think the two have been in different um, trajectories, mate. I think Kyogo is near the end of his career and maybe would just jump at the. If, I'm not saying that Kyogo's in the mindset to jump, but he's like 29, he's probably on his last big contract and he would be tempted by a, a I don't know, a Wolves for talking sake in the other direction, own 50 grand a week. Whereas he's happy where he is, Celtic has got to tie him up. I think that's him till the end of his top level career. Fucking yeah, for me, outstanding. Uh, think, yeah. And Hatati, is that? I think you're right. I think you'll see out his contract, or if not the last year, and maybe get a move back to Japan. Aye, one more. Whereas Hatati, probably somebody who he can sell in two years' time and still make a lot of money. So it makes sense. They both know that. It's the money men, as I said. They don't. So if they'd see the, they see the benefit on the park and off the park. And uh, but I said, just because they're going to discuss a new deal. That just means that it's had the papers that are going to be speaking. It doesn't mean the guy's going to agree yet. When he signs, I'll be delighted. But I wouldn't, just quickly on the end point, I, uh, on the first point, I really don't think there was any, there's any smoke without the fire. I definitely think there was an attitude drop. And I definitely think negotiations have broke down. I think Hatati, if he had his, had his own way, wouldn't have been wearing green and white at the start of this season, David. I, I really don't think it would have been. No, no. And another thing, because we're reading, I know you're reading ahead soon, so I'll quickly ask. Um, if he doesn't sign a contract, Celtic aren't in a position, they're not in any position to, they have to sell him. We signed him on a five-year deal, which was the benefit mm-hmm. of doing that is, you know, he's still got, what, two and a half, three years left on that contract? Yeah, he's still got so, a lot left. We've still got plenty. So, like, if we do decide to sell, we get a decent, uh, we've used that already with Starfelt and Yakimakis that we thought we'd get bigger money than than we probably did. But I think I think if Tati is a bit of a different kettle of fish when it comes to if we were to sell him, I think we we do command a far better fee if if we did go down the route and go, all right, you're not saying you deal like we'll move you on because we've got plenty midfielders that we can go to and we'll maybe sign somebody else. I would rather he stayed. I'd rather I hope he does sign a new contract. But if Megan, if he chooses not to, do Celtic stick or twist, do they sell or do they keep hold him for at least another year? No, I think they they say you can stay in Celtic for one more year because, like you said, he's got two or three years left. Um, I think he's very important to Brendan Rodgers this season because uh, Brendan's playing Champions League. And they'll probably finish third, which means they're going to Europa League. He's still got a lot. Of, he's still got a big part to play. Um, I know we've got a lot of midfielders, but I think he'll be a key to what Brendan will want to do but because he did say what I said about. Um, David Turnbull on Sunday morning I said the physical aspect to Aberdeen and that's why Brendan said they brought uh, Rio onto the pitch because he thought David Turnbull wasn't he um, winning the balls as physical as Rio would it was just unfortunate that he got injured but I think um, in terms of in terms of Rio I think he'll be I think he'll be here for another year for, for another year definitely Absolutely. Well, Regan, if you're needing to shoot off, mate, you're more than welcome to, unless you want to fire on, stay on for the last five, ten minutes. It's up to yourself. Um, we can see your goodbyes if you're going, though. See you later, guys. I'll see you. No worries, man. See you on Sunday, mate. See you on Sunday, guys. For round two. (laughs) See you then, mate. mate. (laughs) Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Right, before we go, we've got five. I think we've got five minutes. We'll go with five. We've got 202 on the bus. I want to see 202 likes before we go. Make sure you do that. <laughs> All right. We're going nowhere until we discuss the burning 
issue in my knickers, David. I can assure you that. Right. Well, I think we just go on to it then. I think there's we've got five minutes to go, so let's <laughs> let's get to it. Bad. So there was news that brought today that Celtic have um, rejected to take the allocation at Ibrox. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, with the new is it the new rules? Am I right, Phil? Saying that the the, the the allocation has to be offered, and then we can decide if we're taking it or not. <sighs> Rangers have chose right. to take their allocation. We have decided not to. Uh, I only got a quick glance at it while it worked today, so I am looking forward to hearing a little bit more about this. But Mark, I'll just let you uh, let you rip. I've not had a good old judge rant for a good ten minutes, so <laughs> let's go for another one. <laughs> ten, ten long minutes, but I'll leave my entire love life up to this point to the side for one moment. Um, well, they've actually got Celtic uh, and Rangers. That you've actually got up until fourteen days to make a resolution, or you can ask the SPFL board. To make a decision for you so they can step in. So it's going to go up until I believe this weekend, uh, maybe even Friday, Saturday, to say, look, we're not happy with the, the allocation we've been given. And the board made a decision on a fair um, uh, kind of uh, no, decision on it. And to be honest with you, uh, this is a really divisive subject because everybody wants the Celtic fans there. The Celtic fans are not wanting. Celtic fans not to be there. They know that the, the team feed off the fans, although I have seen folk on Twitter the day tell me that 800 fans and they're going to make much of a difference. And they're entitled to that opinion, you know what I mean? And, and I, I totally get what they're saying, but there's no sugarcoat this bullshit pill we've been told to Swally. This isn't about safety as such. If they want the 7,000 back, we're not going to get that. Let's be real here, right? Or they want the European allocation, right? But let's not pretend it's about safety because, in fact, if you're giving us that corner, which looks like we're going to have to, even if you get the European allocation, you do get that corner that Ibrox is just about situated now they've sold their season tickets and that they're giving big, bigger um, clubs in Europe uh, that allocation, that section. So you're going to have Rangers fans on each side of you. You can't, you can't stop that. In fact, the more Celtic fans that are in that corner, the, the more targets you get to hit. So there's more chance of more people getting hit, the more fans there is on each side, if you get me. So that argument, listen, I've been to Ibrox, I don't know how many times, right? They used to be a hard task at Ibrox. It'd be a laughing joke. People are getting flung coins. I've seen Celtic fans fling coins at I in Ibrox. I've seen Celtic fans fling coins at Celtic Park to Rangers fans, and I've seen them fling coins to European fans at Celtic Park. Uh, so let's not pretend that we've come down in a, a, a cloud of virtue, virtuousness and we're... we're Angels here. No, nobody deserves to get a coin or a bottle or anything. So the, the club were right to ask for safety assurances, but there's no kid on this was all about fucking safety. It's a stance, it's it's a, a ploy to get the big the bigger allocation back. I back that ploy. I back that ploy. Don't stop my intelligence along the road by telling me it's all about safety. Because they, they asked for nets, Rangers said that they kind of date in time. I don't, want, I don't know why it takes more than a couple of days to, to buy safety nets on each side. I'm pretty sure you could do that in a couple of years. In fact, when, they, when, they, when the players warm up, there's safety nets behind the goal so you don't get up in the face. That's how Phil's not getting any scars on his face watching fucking Bob, Bob Bangura trying to hit his shots warming up. But don't insult my intelligence, right? I'll start off with that. But, but listen, the Celtic players need that presence at Ibrox. When you walk out of that tunnel, Celtic fans are very, very visible. That green and white patch and the corner flag, the same as a lot of teams in Scotland get, their their fans are no, their clubs are no up in arms about it. It's just because it's Rangers and they want to have a bigger crowd and there's, there's more safety concerns. I, I totally get that. I'm not, I'm not ignoring that fact. But we saw through COVID and through previous games at Ibrox how the Celtic, the Celtic team and how the Celtic players in general react to the fans. We need our support there, right? We've not scored a goal against Rangers without our own fans being there. You know what I mean? Not one goal we scored yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't think Celtic perform well without our fans being there. When you're warming up and you've got 50,000 fucking Neanderthals spitting blood at you, you need somebody there that's just that presence for you. Suddenly when you're taking a corner kick, you look at, jo look at Johnny Hayes' goal, goal mm -hmm. and he ran towards the Celtic fans cheering. That's a beautiful image I've got. I see somebody told me on Twitter today, you wouldn't have heard them cheering. Are you fucking for real? I've been to LA games where you get a thousand fans and you can, you can hear the Celtic mm -hmm. fans right through the, the crowd. I've, I've been to 
Celtic games where I've seen the away support in 2000 outsing Celtic fans when we get fucked in Europe. So let's not pretend that you can't hear 800 fans. That That is just mm-hmm. a nonsense, especially in Ibrox, which is like a, a dome. Everything echoes. It, it can get very loud at some points, you know what I mean? Because of the shape of it. So let's not pretend. And I don't think... I think the Celtic players deserve Celtic fans to be there. It's the Celtic fans groups that Celtic have said they've discussed it with and they've, they're, they're no convinced that the fans are going to be safe. Well, put it out there to the fans. I'll buy a ticket. I'm not scared of going. Because if I a coin, if I a coin for fucking donkeys years, we find coins in the, in the 20s each other, bottles, fucking bottles full of pish and everything. So let's not pretend it's about that. Nobody mm-hmm. is sat in that corner at Ibrox can tell me they've no coins flung at them. Nobody, even one group, even a group of supporters for Falkirk can tell you they're not coins flung at them. We've seen mm-hmm. batteries and fucking bottles of uh, glass balls and everything, you name it, found behind after a Leon game. Hundreds and hundreds of things lined up like mm-hmm. it was a joke. All if it was all, a case of safety, Mark, if it was a case to being concerned about safety, you just have to look at Joe Hart. If you have to if, if, Joe Hart, was, if Joe Hart had glass thrown at him, yes. Celtic would go, well, listen, we're not going to have a goalkeeper in the box then. Where was Celtic's public outcry about that? I should be a statement. There was no CCTV TV switched on, and the biggest powder keg fixture in Britain, there was no CCTV looked at that. Don't think so. Where was Celtic's public outcry? Where was the inquiry by the police? The, the same match with a, a Celtic physio getting stitches, bottles of glass bottles on the pitch. David Tumble hopped with a glass of juice. It's, um, the Celtic score a goal was like ticker tape running down, trick on down with all the, the sunshine that hit off all the coins. It's the same every match. Let's not pretend this happened when, when they stopped the big crowds. And if somebody said to me, Oh, you're safer for 7,000 fans, this isn't a one on one fight. A coin's a coin, no matter how many folks in that stand, you're still going to get hit. In fact, they're going to have more people to hit with, with coins. Listen, if you're scared to go, I totally get it. You know why I get happy with a coin? Who does? Right? I understand it. Listen, let folk like me, but Phil, the ones who don't wear ballet clavers like the hard men, but then shite yourself to go to away games because we got a doing at Hamden, because we got a doing at Ajax, because we got a doing everywhere we fucking go and pretend that we're, we're nut jobs. No, I, don't, I don't understand it. Celtic have got a duty of care to the fans. I'm totally with that. Right? What said they should have, been, should have been gone for since day one then under this argument is to get the fans relocated to the back of the tier because it's harder to turn around and find a coin past police up in the air and hit a fan behind it than it is being here. They should have asked for a relocation of some of their fan base to a certain, a long a wee bit and put Celtic to the very back of the stand. In fact, that would have, did, that would have, that would have took Celtic fans out of the eye shot with a camera and it would have took Celtic fans uh, oh, away from the coins. It would, it would, it would, it would Solve both problems. Right. It's a ploy to get the big, to get the big crowds back. Just say it's a ploy. Don't pretend it's a fucking some sort of a uh, oh, we don't want our fans to get. Where was it? Where was the protection? Where was it? The public outcry uh, how our fans are treated when there's when there's supporters buses getting stopped uh, by the police and pouring out bo- bottles of unopened drink, locked away, locked away in storage. Where was the public outcry when Celtic fans were getting? Harassed at train stations at, at Fur Park and Kamal. Paul's going to pubs. Paul's going to pubs at away matches in Dundee and going into pubs and searching fans for any reason. Where was it a public outcry for all that? I just don't understand. I mean, I, I, so I think pick and choose our battles. Were we shite bags in the boardroom? We should be asking for relocation, right? Or find a solution. Talk to the SFA. We'll get, we'll get 14 days before the match, which is this weekend. To ask the SFA to step in and say, sort this out for us. You make a thousand, you make it twelve hundred, but it'll be better than what I've been offered just do because their job is to compromise with both clubs. So we should step should have to ask. We shouldn't have to ask the SFA. But there's a provision for that though, mate. See if you see if so that some article if you if you if you've got a two two boards that can't find a solution, that you shouldn't have to, but there's a there's a, an avenue for the both for Celtic to write a letter and say, can you can you come at a compromise for us? And then it goes to a panel who decide. Celtic know that because it was published last week in the papers. They put the, the Sun newspaper, who I hate mentioning, they said, this is something Celtic can do. And then they mentioned it again tonight. 
So this isn't news to anybody. It was news to me, but it can be news to your, your, your directors and your board no. members. They must know no. these articles inside out. And I just don't know if this is a, a PR by the Celtic board to try and get more fans in the, in the stadium. Great, great. But they in different ways. Don't lock us out because I think the, the players need us and the fans deserve us to be and the fans deserve to be there for the players. I don't think Celtic perform well with foot fans. And you know something? I don't care what Andy says. There's nothing better than being that wee section and then and everybody else when about you second when you win. Mm-hmm. We deserve to be there. And I know for a fact if they went and sailed the tomorrow, they'd be sold out within 13 seconds. So let's not pretend that we're all worried about our safety. Anytime you walk through Glasgow in general with a Celtic tap on, you're taking a chance. You know what I mean? So let's just put the, let's just put all, all the bullshit aside here, David. I mean, football is football. And folk get so so uptight about football that they will get violent. This is something new. Well, before we go, Mark's mentioned about us, you know, perhaps Rangers could move us further up and be out of Ivy. That's exactly what Barcelona do. Barcelona put their their away fans in the absolute nosebleeds, mm-hmm. so yeah. you can't hear them, you can't see them. They bring very little to the to the fixture, um, but they're there, and they're, yeah. and, they're, and, they're, and you're taking the thing. What I feel is Celtic are taking away the fans' decision and right to go to a football game, and that's that's the big problem here. And so, and uh, I think it was Patrick McLaughlin made a good point saying if a, if a stadium have literally come out and said especially with like member of Chris Sutton, that they can't mm-hmm. guarantee somebody's safety in their stadium, well then, shouldn't they? Shouldn't there be a, a ban on fans at all being no, in the stadium? Well, <laughs> you know, admitting your fans are animals by stating you can't ensure people's safety. Yeah. Now, whether, if it's whether it's racist chants in Hungary or mm-hmm. um, violence in, in Prague, I'm sure there was, the, the, the ban... There will be a ban. You will, we will punish the fans. They've punished the, yep. the club by not allowing a home fans. It'll be a match behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. And if you can't, if you can't guarantee your away uh, away supporter safety, then nobody should be allowed in the ground. Yep. Uh, but the point is, like Mark, Mark, Mark's absolutely hit the nail on the head tonight. But Hi. if 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 you can't guarantee somebody's safety and Celtic are having to say like if there's if that is what it is which we don't think it is mm. well then you have to if it isn't that if it isn't really that and it's all about a ploy to get more mm. people in the grounds well I'm sorry you're taking it out of paying Celtic supporters who pay towards your club and trying to support the team you're taking that you're taking that choice away from them let those that want to go to the game that aren't concerned about their safety like Mark says Allow them to have that choice, Phil, to go to the game. You, they're taking your choice away from you to go and yep. watch and support your club in, in, in a specific ground. It just wouldn't happen anywhere else. Would not happen in any other league. The Mickey Mouse SPFL that we that we play in. Yeah, well, we're, we're the world's worst for just like you know, doing a mockery of our own league. The the powers that be that run this. Uh, shit Could you show imagine the if league this was Liverpool? Times. Could you imagine this was Liverpool and Man United, Phil? Oh, no, Gary Neville been... and Jimmy Carragher are having to sit there and discuss. Listen, Man United are tired of Liverpool partying in their stadium, yep. so they're no longer allowing Liverpool. Yep. The EPL Sky wouldn't stand for it. Sky nope. wouldn't. They would pull the plug. They would. Nah. They would sort sort it out. We pay it's, you X amount. It's of quite a surprise that the TV, the Sky, haven't had some sort of say yet about this because the spectacle of the fixture is getting ruined. It's only selling point for them. It's only I mean, selling point. But Mark. What you've said there, I mean, I can't really add much to it to be fair because it was spot on, really. And I'm very much in the same camp as you. And I think we're maybe in the minority where we feel that we do need a presence there, regardless of mm-hmm. if it is 700, as much Stats. of a pittance as it yeah. is. I think we do need some kind of presence there, just that focal point. Can I ask you, Phil, what do you think? Like, can you imagine? So let's just flip this right for one minute. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine today's news story was Celtic wanted 800 tickets and Rangers said, No, you can't get them? This podcast would be a lot with anger about Celtic fans deserving to go. Mm-hmm. But would actually, it, it would be, it would, would, Celtic Twitter would be fucking gone bananas at Rangers no offering us tickets. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the, the flip side of all on that is their fans are going to be Celtic. Celtic have now come out twice a day and said it's not going to happen. 
we might uh, incur some sort of, I don't care if we'll pay a fine, but we might incur a wee bit of break doing a uh, partnership with the SFA, the partnership, but seeing you break that, yeah. that, uh, that kind of bond and trust you get after just being yeah. easy to negotiate with, that doesn't come back, mate. You know what I mean? We've already mm-hmm. argued with the BBC this season, which I'm right behind, but we don't want to turn into Rangers and just argue with everybody. You know what I mean? I just don't understand it, Phil. I just, I think it's about time, mate. Scottish football has talked, mean, a pure utter arse itself, you know, and we're the only, you see some countries where they're, they're running about with their shoes off, trying to hit each other and all the rest of it, and you laugh at that, but there's no other country that makes a bigger arse of themselves than Scotland when it comes to football. People just, everything they day just revolves on their, their utter pettiness, it's it's embarrassing. Get the fans of the football, we all sat, we all sat during covid just pray for that that day to get back to Celtic Park and pray to watch Celtic in the flesh. Mm-hmm. And then instead of fucking sucking up every game that, that they can, we've got folk just being angry for no reason. And that's cheap coming for me, but if I was not getting a big allocation, the allocation's gone. We're not going to get 5,000 yeah. or 7,000 anymore. Aye. We have to haggle, we have to barter. If it starts at 800, we'll go for it and then see how, how far we get with it. But there's no certain what's the Celtic team that we all love. We we want him to win one on see one match day against Rangers. How many fans we've got in a stadium to me is irrelevant. We want the team to win. And the best chance we've got to win is to have Celtic fans in that stadium, yeah. cheering that team going into the huddle, cheering that team when they warm up. And mm-hmm. if they get a victory, for the players to walk here and embrace every single one of them. And you don't right. get that playing at iBooks with any fans. You just right. don't get it. Because the folks sit in the fucking and the director's seats at iBooks with a title, they will stand up and cheer the Celtic fans. We need somebody there. Yep. And we need the fucking the Celtic fans, 800, who would go to where they are slugging their heart out for the full, full 90 minutes. And hmm. I can assure you, they will be heard. They will be heard. Unless Rangers are 1-5-0 at, at kick-off, Celtic fans will be heard at iBooks. So let's just get that quite a... Uh, before people start, you could hear them in. just fine when Carter Vickers scored that winning goal in 2021 against them. We only had well, 100 fans in the corner. Look, look at Kyogo's equaliser. And yes, right, I'll right. Back to it. Look at if you look at uh, Johnny Hayes goal, Hayes the camera goal. just just pans to him just quite nicely. He runs towards that corner flag, and you can see that that looks like a proper away team's just scored. Mm-hmm. The camera's got some angle of it. What's going to happen? You're just going to hear a penny drop like we heard at Celtic Park when Rangers scored. And I just didn't feel the same. I don't want to hear Rangers fans cheering. I don't want to hear Rangers fans in general. I think most yeah. of them have crawled out the fucking gutter, to be quite honest with you. But I want yep. Celtic to have that opportunity. Right. And I just don't understand. I get the argument and I get where people want to go to the next... They back go back to the, the old days where you get the bigger crowds. I understand that. I, I'm with a ticket for iRooks for four years because it's well my lands has got a dog in the race, a dog in the fight, sorry, but I just I don't understand how you can you can say one day that Celtic fans are the twelfth men and we we're the heart, we're the blood life of this club. But then on the next breath say that Celtic fans that don't make much difference at iBooks. I don't understand that uh, that logic at all. If we know there, David, we're we know Phil who is there for the players inside the stadium? They need somebody there. I think so. You know what I mean? And no. if you if you think your Celtic fans don't spur the team on, you've never been to a Celtic match, mate, because the Celtic fans would spur any football any football player on. They just they're, they're a different level for any fan base, mate. They really are. I feel like we could we could spend another forty five minutes on this because I, I there's oh, I do it's... want to get more uh, on this, but we are running out of time. But there's a, a lot of people obviously that are not agreeing with you, Mark. Um, and you could totally their points are you're right Rangers did start Rangers did start this of course and they did a, there yeah is, there is, no, the, and there is a there is a fair point in saying that you know if we do accept the 700 tickets is it seen as playing into their hands and they're getting their own way as usual is that what these, these points but, 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 so what I want to do is I think this is going to rage on so I want you all that are on tonight to make sure you're back on Sunday Blather Mark mm-hmm. are you going to be there for me? Are you going to be on Sunday this Sunday? No, I'm, I know I'm working. Mate. No, you're not. Okay, right. Well, Mark will be back on. And I want this to continue. Uh, we will get, whether we get a judgment day in at some point next week, that's all. Yeah, no, we, get a judge, week, we will get our judgment day done mm-hmm. next week. And I want the likes of Peg Leg and uh, there was someone else. I want you guys back on. And I want to discuss the other side of this because I feel like yeah. there's way more meat on the bones to have, but we're running out of time. Uh, but David, just, just before you go, just before you go, 
if you're turning into a petty thing, we can't let them win this this fight. You're totally missed the point. You're totally missed the point. If it's about safety, if it's about, if it's about getting their fans, I'm with you. Let's talk about that. Let's discuss that. But if you if it's good to pettiness about them saying black and we're saying white, you're totally missing why I want the Celtic fans to be there and why the Celtic board want more Celtic fans to be there. You're missing it can't be just about the pettiness because mm. not letting them get one up on you is a total different argument and a total different stance face uh, the, what they're talking about here. Mm. We, we, if they wear yellow jumpers, we wear green, it's, or whatever, we've got to be the opposite to them. I understand that mindset, right? But they can't turn us into us just mm. saying the opposite because we don't want them to, to, to win the argument. It, but it, we will on Judgment Day. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we will. Do you know what? I'm glad there's folk with different opinions for me and different opinions for Phil. But I tell you something right now. See anybody in that chat that's saying, "Oh, if if their emails come in the morning saying you've you're, 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 you've got an option for a ticket for Ibrox, they don't buy it. Every one of them would buy it. I'd buy it. And so they would be too afraid to but they would all buy it, yeah. unless of course you're scared in the case of Bitcoin gets flung at you. And boohoo about that, fuck's sake. Be careful on a Saturday night, drop the tune because you might, might get up with a bus or somebody might fling a wee chip at you. <laughs> right. So, tomorrow we are back on Phil. Yeah. Is, I'll be back with Mr. Friday night again. Yeah. Mr. Friday night is returning. It's not well, nostalgia. We've changed that. Yeah. Uh, okay. There is a the Friday feeling. It's going to be a sort of a preview show to the upcoming fixture on the weekend, a little preview of the preview. So, yeah, make sure you guys are all back for that. Thanks again. Thanks, Regan, yes, for indeed. joining us. You had to shoot off early. Phil, always a pleasure. The judge, we yes. love our chats, mate. We love our chats, and uh, we enjoy having those chats with you guys in the live chat. Thanks for all your comments. Make sure that you get the uh, the judgment day questions in because I think there'll be a post going up soon about that because we're definitely going to talk a bit more about this. Mm -hmm. And we will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Thanks yep. for joining. Catch you then, guys. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot.